It's full speed ahead for NASCAR in 2024, as the LA Clash is this weekend at the LA Memorial Coliseum. But how is Los Angeles as a whole reacting to NASCAR back in the city for the third straight year? Is rain in the forecast? And we have sponsor news, massive sponsor news, and who might or might not be racing the Indy 500 in the coming years? We're going to break it all down today on Shifting Gears. Hi, 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 push it, push it, push it, push it, check your bike. Hell yeah! What's the caution for? Mate, can I not push it in? Stop anybody. Woo! Yeah! Oh, he's going. Woo! Way to go, boy. One hell of a job, man. One hell of a job. Thank you so much. I am a still recovering Alan Bailey. Yes, Shifting Gears is back. Sorry for our little delay right there. We missed a couple of shows due to my health issues, unfortunately. But do me a favor, help me feel a little bit better and mash that subscribe button so that you do not miss a video in 2024. And of course, you can always log on to arnrace.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. Lots to talk about. You see what I did with the NASCAR full speed right there at the beginning? Yeah, if you have haven't noticed the NASCAR full speed documentary is now on Netflix. I binged the whole thing. That review is coming out tomorrow, hopefully. And I'm curious to hear what you have to say about it. So leave it in the comments. What did you think of the NASCAR full speed documentary? And are you a casual fan? Are you a diehard fan? I'm kind of curious to get the read on this one. I've been reading a lot of comments, so leave it in the comments down below. But for the first time in 2024, it's race week. That's right, cars are going to be on track this weekend at the LA Memorial Coliseum for the third year for the Los Angeles Clash at the LA Coliseum. Honestly, I'm excited about it, but this year it, it feels different. This is potentially the final year of the clash at the LA Coliseum. It was a three-year deal, and this is the third year, and honestly, haven't seen that much uh, advertisement around the city. I drive uh, about 100 miles round trip into uh, the studio in Los Angeles where I work, and the first two years, I was seeing signages for a month leading into the clash, and only this week have I started seeing signages and billboards and stuff in uh, LA in the city. So NASCAR's back down its marketing for this year. It's a little bit different, but there is still signage everywhere. And honestly, if you're going to market the week of the race is the week to go ahead and start marketing and put it out there in a heavy rotation. So kudos to NASCAR for doing that. But Honestly, a lot of people were talking about the fact that rain is in the forecast. It's sunny and 70-ish. Yeah, it's it's 70 degrees out right now here in Los Angeles at the moment on Wednesday. But unfortunately, tomorrow we're going to get a heavy rain cell. And then Friday, supposedly it's going to clear up. And a lot of people were saying, oh, it's raining Saturday. It's raining Sunday. As of right now, 0% chance of rain on Saturday and only about a 15% chance of rain on Sunday. And that's going to be around noon, three o'clock local time with uh, the actual race for the NASCAR Mexico series starting around three o'clock local time and then the clash going to be starting later in the evening so hopefully the rain stays away yes rain tires are here in Los Angeles so they will race in the rain worst case scenario and I gotta be honest I'm kind of down for a rain race at the LA Coliseum for the final year I think it would be really really cool but honestly it should be a great race so if you're in the area it is free to come out to the Coliseum on Saturday to watch the heat races, to watch the practice sessions. So I encourage you to come on down to the LA Coliseum on Saturday for free. It's 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 free. I mean, what more can you ask for? So come on down on Saturday if you're in the area. Sunday, it should be pretty damn cool as well. Potentially the last time out here. And I know there's some diehards screaming, put it back in Daytona. Nobody watched when it was in Daytona. Nobody went to it when it was in Daytona because they just wanted to go to the 500 the next week. Can you blame them? So I do think that this race might need to go to another city. I don't think it needs to go back to Daytona. So if you're in charge of NASCAR, where do you put the clash in 2024 or 2025? I should say, let me know in the comments down below. Speaking of rain in the local Southern California area, it was announced that the 2024 Irwindale All-Star Showdown, which was originally scheduled for this Saturday night here at Irwindale Speedway locally in Los Angeles, uh, has been postponed, unfortunately, to May 16th through the 18th of 2024. Listen, there's a lot of drivers locally that come out for this race uh, and some from out of state that come for this race. And simply put, with rain in the area and it being questionable at best, 
request, wisely, Tim and everybody at Irwindale said, you know what, let's go ahead and put this uh, a little bit further away from the rain and let's get away from the bad weather. Let's put on a good show for these fans and kudos to Tim and everybody at Irwindale Speedway for making this difficult decision. Uh, I'm looking forward to it when it happens in May of 2024. So you can go ahead and log on to IrwindaleSpeedway.com in order to get those tickets for the May race, the uh, Irwindale All-Star Showdown in 2024. And yes, if you've already purchased tickets, those tickets will be honored in May when the race actually happens. This story caught a couple people off guard, but not me. Uh, Justin Haley came out and said that he's passed on opportunities, plural, to race the Indianapolis 500. He's an Indiana native, and he now races for Rick Ware Racing in the number 51 in the NASCAR Cup Series. And Rick Ware does have an IndyCar program, and honestly, that would be a very easy little slide. This came up when he signed with them last year, and he said, quote, I've actually turned down one or two Indy 500 rides, which is surprising. I don't feel I'm quite ready yet, but I've had an opportunity to run it a few years back, and then I think one other time, so I don't know. Not quite yet. I'm not quite to the point in my career where I feel that's something I want to tackle. Very wise choice on Justin Haley's part, sincerely. Personally, if I'm from Indiana, if I have an opportunity to run the Indianapolis 500, I'm going to take it. However, what would you rather have? Would you rather just do it and potentially finish dead last and not be competitive? Or would you rather make sure that you're ready to go and actually have a shot to win that race? I'd rather have a shot to win that race because you could potentially only get one shot at running that race if you're a NASCAR guy, if you're somebody who doesn't race in IndyCar on a regular basis. And I get it. Kyle Larson's racing it this year. There's only been a handful of NASCAR drivers who have attempted the double, and presumably Haley would need to do the double. Kurt Busch was the last NASCAR driver that did the double. He did a great job. Tony Stewart also did it a while back, and he did a great job with it. But it's something that doesn't happen as much, and because of story times things are a little bit easier to do nowadays but it's still a challenge and we're gonna see if Kyle Larson can pull it off in 2024. Some sponsor news to get to here. Uh, Mavis Tire and Brake is back with Denny Hamlin. This is what the car will look like in 2024, similar to what it looked like last season. And again, we see that FedEx is not continuing to step back. They're running roughly the same amount of races that they did in 2023, in 2024. And Honestly, it just feels like Denny Hamlin's that guy who is going to be looking for sponsorship in 2024. I'm hearing that there is still a few races available for him in the 2024 season. Daniel Suarez has a new sponsor for the 2024 season with Choice Privileges, which is a reward program with international hotels. Uh, they're going to be on the car for a handful of races in 2024. Not a bad looking car. And once again, you see that Trackhouse continues to bring in big name sponsors and new sponsors for 2024 they had a big influx from bush beer coming over for ross chastain for about half the season so congratulations to track house for bringing in another big name sponsor bet mgm is back with rcr they're going to be on kyle bush's number eight and austin dillon's number three in the 2024 season for a handful of races for both of these cars uh kyle bush continuing to find sponsors despite the fact that joe gibbs racing couldn't find sponsors for them continues to be a fascinating story but honestly not a bad looking car uh, for either one of these vehicles but um, I'd like to see a little bit richer of a color and not a uh, faded out color on Kyle Busch's car but still not a bad looking set of cars. This is a very interesting one. The fact that Mobile One is not only back with Toyota but they've expanded their relationship with Toyota. So basically when Toyota drivers don't have a sponsor instead of having a giant Toyota logo on the car now we're going to see a giant Mobile One logo on the car. So very brilliant marketing strategy on Mobile One's part, sign with a manufacturer uh, so that you kind of get a very nice influx of the drivers, uh, not necessarily signing with one particular driver, but signing with the manufacturer allows you to kind of have essentially 15-ish, give or take, um, drivers to pull from and to have an opportunity to, to win with. And we're going to see Mobile One on a handful of other cars, not just Toyotas in the 2024 season. But uh, some paint schemes look great. Some are questionable at best. But um, we will see Mobile One on the number 20 car this weekend at the LA Coliseum. So we're going to get a good look at them and expect to see Mobile One on Toyotas a lot more in 2024. 
This one's a few days old, but I, I had to talk about it. Uh, Josh Williams is going to be driving the number 16 for Colleg Racing at the LA Coliseum, and supposedly a handful of races in the Cup Series in that number 16 in 2024. Is he ready for Cup? Eh, I don't know. I'm not trying to diss the guy. I just, I question this move. To me, this solidifies the fact that Colleg Racing is still very much a pay-to-race team. Now it almost is exclusively a pay-to-race team. You look at the 31, essentially uh, Daniel Hemrick bought that ride by bringing sponsors up from the Xfinity Series and up to the Cup Series, and Williams is more or less doing the same with a handful of Cup starts. And listen, I'm not saying the guy isn't deserving. I think he does deserve to be in the Cup Series at some point. I think he needs to get a full Xfinity Series schedule with Colleg under his belt before he attempts the cup. This just feels like a, oh, we need somebody to be in this car. Uh, you, bring your money. Come here. Let's go. Let's go. Cup Series. Let's go. Uh, we're going to see AJ Allmendinger in the number 16 for the Daytona 500 and for presumably the road courses. Um, but now it becomes a who's in the 16 this week uh, kind of rotation game. And honestly, from what I'm hearing, Colleg Racing doesn't even know who's going to be in that 16 car uh, for the majority of these races in 2024. But it feels like Josh Williams is essentially going to be the, oh, we don't have anybody else that's ready to be in this number 16 car. Williams, come here. Park it right there. Go ahead. Get on in. Which... Honestly, I, I hope to see him making the best of the opportunity, but it feels like he's being rushed up into this car simply because Colleg Racing doesn't have anybody else to fill this seat. And of course, at the end of every episode in 2024, we're going to be opening up the mailbag. Your comments from the videos down below, uh, they all get fed into the same uh, mailbox. So go ahead and drop any comment on any video here on the channel, and I will see them and we pick out a few and answer them for you guys. And we will go ahead and start with... Uh, Flander F1. I'm considering making the plunge myself, and this video helps a bunch. Is there that steep of a re-learning curve? I'm a competitive driver and regularly win at my local kart track for league events. Do you think that experience will help me get started? Uh, this is coming from our um, video that we did actually almost two years ago now. God, I f it feels like it was just yesterday of getting into iRacing for the first time. And if you haven't, if you're a competitive driver, if you're somebody who's interested in getting into iRacing, I highly recommend it. It is extraordinarily expensive, but yes, it is expensive extremely cool it is extremely good to jump into um if you're a guy who's winning at your local short track i don't think there's going to be that steep of a learning curve me coming from a video game background i grew up playing the thunder series and played every video game from essentially 98 99 up until today uh it was a steep learning curve because it's an actual good driving model um somebody who's been driving carts like yourself um i don't think it's going to be that steep of a learning curve there is a bit of a learning curve um I absolutely love it. I love jumping on iRacing. I love the longer races. I just raced a uh, 94 lap race uh, last week for the Winter Series in the 87 Legend Cars, and that was an absolute blast. Driving around Talladega and actually having to lift in the corners because the 87 cars are so much faster than the current Cup cars was an absolute blast. And I'm looking forward to the entire 2024 NIS season where uh, you race at every track that the Cup Series is racing at that's going to be a blast so i highly recommend you jump on into iRacing the only downside is that it is pretty damn expensive but uh the thing that i encourage you to do is to um go ahead and jump into iRacing in the month of November, December, because typically um, memberships are put on a Black Friday sale around that time of the year where it's 50% off for new members. Um, so I highly recommend you wait until then or uh, do it then if you're able to, or if you're like me and you want to jump into it as soon as possible, jump on in, buy the long membership. I bought a two-year membership um, about a year and a half ago, a little over a year ago, and I'm absolutely loving iRacing so far. Another gaming question from Xif. Apologies if I butchered that. I'm a career mode guy, and I'd love to have Arca, Trucks, and Xfinity for an AI drivers move up and down the series and make part-time starts and also a team owner mode where you can control or start your own team and develop drivers, also generate random drivers that will come up through the series like other sports games with their drafts and where it's fake people that have dynamic potentials. 
yeah, this video was for the NASCAR 25 wish list. Uh, and I agree. Um, I think that when iRacing, and if you're unaware, iRacing picked up the rights uh, to do uh, the console game for NASCAR uh, from Motorsport Games. They purchased that gaming rights. And I agree, yes. At some point down the road, I would love to see Arca Truck Xfinity in the game, but I think for the first year, I think that iRacing should just focus on the Cup Series, and then year two, three, go ahead and add the Xfinity Truck uh, and and maybe the Arca Series. I don't know if the Arca Series is necessarily ever going to make it to video games uh, because um, the rights with those drivers, there's so many drivers that are just part-time, and there's so few drivers that run the full season in Arca that I don't know if it's going to be that good necessarily. So uh, maybe that's something that they could do down the road. But yes, I'd love to see that. And yes, you're right. I'd like to see what we saw in the Thunder Series where we have drivers retiring, real Xfinity and truck drivers moving up to those rides, um, other drivers kind of making part-time starts and things like that. That's an absolute must at this point for uh, that game. And uh, hopefully iRacing will be able to give that to us when that game does drop in 2025. If NASCAR goes all electric, I'm done watching NASCAR. Okay. Thanks for playing. Thanks for watching. I mean, I listen, electric is the future. Hybrid systems are the future. It's something that we have already seen in motorsports play out. And NASCAR is kind of late to the party on this. And it's what consumers want. It's what consumers are buying. Hybrid cars and electric cars are selling better than ever, better than trucks, better than cars, better than anything in the United States at the moment. So NASCAR is essentially just adapting to what consumers want and what they're doing. And if you disagree with that or you don't like it, I'm sorry. It's what most of the country is doing at this point. And yeah, I don't think NASCAR is going to go all electric at some point. Uh, maybe they will in, you know, 50, 60 years, who the hell knows. But for now, I don't think NASCAR is going to go electric i think we're going to get a hybrid or an electric series in the next five to ten years i'm gonna guess maybe sooner if uh the uh demonstration at the la coliseum this sunday goes well and that's the thing i'm very much looking forward to is taking an up close look at that thing um I'm going to see what kind of access NASCAR gives us. I, uh, as media members, I have a, a media credential and a photo vest uh, waiting for me at the Coliseum. And um, I'm very much looking forward to see what that vehicle looks like. Uh, my understanding going into it is that it's going to be kind of like an SUV sport utility crossover type vehicle with a hybrid electrical component in it. I don't know. We're going to see. That demonstration is going to be happening before uh, the clash at the LA Coliseum this Sunday. So I'm going to honestly wait and see what it looks like. I also want to remind you, you can also go ahead and check out our Team Chaos YouTube channel. Uh, it is our eSport and gaming second channel right here. Uh, we ran the... Uh, eNASCAR Winter iRacing Series over the weekend came so damn close to winning at Talladega and unfortunately got loose in the trioval and went for a flip coming to the line uh, while we were leading. Still not 100% over that, still a little bit bitter over that, but you know what? We somehow finished third, so you can go check out that full race replay on our YouTube channel right now. And actually today we're going to be racing um, the Team Chaos Chevy in uh, the season finale for that winter series uh, over on our YouTube channel here in just a few hours actually, so go check that out. Uh, if not, the full race replay is going to be up on there. Really excited to see what we have at Homestead to end out the season, and then of course we're racing the the entire NIS season in 2024 over on the channel. So go give it a subscribe if you haven't already. It's going to be an absolute blast. Cannot wait. And of course, we're heading to the LA Clash this weekend. So here's what the next week or so is going to look like as far as shows. Tomorrow, expect a full recap of the NASCAR Full Speed documentary that's on Netflix Season 1. That's going to be coming out tomorrow here on the channel. And then on Friday, we're going to have our usual news show and kind of a preview of what's happening this weekend at the LA Coliseum. And then, of course, on Monday, you're going to see kind of the race recap weekend recap that we film at the LA Coliseum that's going to be coming out on Monday so check out that and then next week we're also going to be doing our 2024 preview I'm going to be talking with teams I'm going to be talking with crew members and really figuring out 
who's going to be good this year and who needs to get some work done. The LA Coliseum is always a really good indication as to what's happening with all of these teams. We're going to be seeing these cars in person. We're going to be doing an entire 2024 uh, paint scheme preview with everything that we see at the LA Coliseum. Because honestly, I want to see these cars in real life. A rendering and what we see on a computer is vastly different than what we see up close and in person. And I got to tell you, last year at the Coliseum, I got an up-close look at some of these bodies and some of the modifications uh, that were done to the next gen in the off-season for 2023, and it changed my mind drastically. So I'm going to go ahead and do that grunt work, do the footwork for you guys this weekend so we can see what these cars look like in 2024. And yes, there's going to be a lot of photos. We're going to take, uh, try to take a photo of every single car that's on the track or in the garage area and get you an up-close look at these vehicles and have that for you sometime next week or leading into the Daytona 500. So a lot happening here on the channel. If you haven't already, mash that subscribe button so that you do not miss an episode. At the moment, we're gonna be doing episodes on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, weather permitting, my voice and my health permitting, but I'm still recovering from my black mold infection, unfortunately, but that's on the back end. I'm starting to get better, thankfully, and we're working towards a good goal here. So uh, make sure that you also log on to arnrace.com for the latest motorsports news in between videos, ARN, the Motorsports Authority. I wanna thank you so much for watching. For Shifting Gears, I'm Alan Bailey. We'll see you at the track.